Today I want to cover PyLint and Django Lint for Python static code analysis. Just a reminder, you can find the original post on my blog, linked down in the description, along with any reference links and source code. So I used PyLint and Django Lint on an internal engagement recently, and I wanted to show how simple they are to use. While testing a Django application, I decided to try out Django Lint for some static analysis. First, I installed the Django Lint module using pip. Next, I tried to run the tool against the application, but I was in the wrong folder. When I went to the correct folder, I learned that I was missing the Django module. Finally, I installed Django using pip again and was ready to start. With Django and Django Lint installed, it was time to see if I could find any vulnerabilities using static analysis. First, I ran the application against my demo source, but received an error about a missing init.py file. After finally going to the correct application directory, I was able to successfully run Django Lint. Unfortunately, there was nothing of note and I had just a few errors and style issues that I could fix if I wanted to. With nothing fruitful coming from Django Lint during the engagement, I decided to give PyLint a try on my personal repositories. First, I installed PyLint using pip. This was the only package that I needed to install, so I was ready to try out the application. First, when I ran the application, I only received errors about missing init.py files. Next, I ran a quick one-liner to add an init file to every directory that wasn't named .git. As you can see, this made quite the fun commit to my repository. Finally, I was able to run the application and check my errors. As you can see, I received a ton of messages about my repositories and a few useful errors. I know that this is a wall of text, but I wanted to show some of the common issues that you might run across, as well as leave it here for, honestly, me to reference in the future. I know that I initially set out to perform static analysis on the security of these applications, but I was not successful. That said, I did find a few tools that I would like to try in the future. So stay tuned for a potential blog post, but let me know if you have any different recommendations. Pi NTCH is old and likely out of date. Python Taint looks good but is no longer maintained, but Bandit is a new and relevant security linter from Pi CQA. I think a great first test for these would be my Python code injection demo, so I look forward to trying them out. While static analysis didn't find me any vulnerabilities, it did help to get a little more familiar with these tools. I think that Bandit will be the first security-based scanner that I try, but let me know if you have any other suggestions. I hope to update my security tools repository for all the errors at the very least, but feel free to submit those pull requests for me. And as always, don't forget to click this video up here that is suggested to you by the magical YouTube algorithm, and be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons to help grow and support this channel.